Hello, you have reached the offices of Dan Clark. Hey, how's it, how's it going? Yo. What name did you just say? <laughs> this is the offices of Dan Clark. Oh, hey, Clark. <laughs> so let's get right to it. I've never seen somebody hated on so much than the Samanetti source. That guy has a lot of haters. But let's get right to it. You have some new Manny Machado info. Drop it right now. Um. Yeah, so I... I always talk about that I that I talk to really three people overall one that I find myself to be um, very very reliable two other ones who I feel like um, I need to get additional information on before I go ahead and say that I feel it's accurate well I've been able to do that so I do have more information that a lot of people basically what Dan Clark has said that Manny Machado has told friends that he's choosing the New York Yankees that is what I'm told. That that's something I'm comfortable with going ahead and saying. Um, does this mean Manny Machado's a Yankee? Do it as you want. You know, it's not. It's never official until it's official. We do know for a long time that Manny Machado has wanted to be a Yankee. Everything has led up to this moment. It was always going to come down to what the Yankees were going to offer. I reported weeks ago that the Yankees are willing to go to eight years, and I heard that I spoke about in the live chat a little earlier. The Yankees are likely going to try to sit at about 250 or so. That's a rumor I heard um, a couple of hours ago, well, during today. But this news that I'm talking about now, I got that here in the last 15 to 20 minutes or so, that two of my sources that I feel are, are, are fairly reliable, reliable enough when both confirm, that they've heard the same thing that basically Dan Clark has said that he has told certain friends that he is choosing the New York Yankees. Exactly, and I don't find it hard to believe because if uh, Dan Clark is speaking out of his ass, I mean, he should be checked into a mental institution if he's making that stuff up. So he's putting his uh, money where his mouth is, and um, I think what he's saying is 100% on point. Well, one of the things, too, that people got to remember is that Dan Clark, I mean, at the end of the day, look, I mean, Dan Clark is a major league, uh, is a journalist. He, he's a he's a MLB writer. He, he's wrote specifically for many people. from uh, Baltimore too. He's won awards. He's done many different things. So for for him to go out there, even if you have a gut feeling, so even if you have a gut feeling that man is going to be a Yankee, for him to go out there and even defend his story because he didn't just put it out there and yeah. say it'll happen. And then, but he went he went as far out as even defending it even more to flat out say when when I'm right, hopefully you guys come back and go good job. You know what I mean? So he kind of doubled down on it also. So for a guy like him to do that, it really wouldn't make much sense when you could kind of just sit back and wait. Um, but but he went out there and said it. He's very confident in it. Um, I have not g gotten nothing back yet from my most reliable guy. But I do know enough about these other two that I am confident to confirm this when they both told me the same thing. Exactly. And, um, you know, secrets can't be kept in NYC. I mean, this is a big city and um, with a Dominican population here in New York City as well. And the former teammates that um, Manny Machado had with the Baltimore Orioles, obviously a guy like Dan Clark is going to have access to that information because he was or still is a journalist for the Baltimore area. Specifically yeah, correct. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. I mean, like, look, I've had my back and forth with Dan Clark, you know, to the point of where he's blocked me on Twitter, which is fine. That's all <laughs> fine and dandy, and that's okay. And we had a disagreement on the way he talked about Machado. But that that's not a disagreement on the way he works. I mean, he's obviously gotten to a point uh, for a reason. Now, the funny thing is about Yankee Twitter is that you'll have a lot oh, of Oh, man, they're insane. They're, they're lunatics. They don't have the nerve to do certain things like this. Even if even if they had the opportunity to do yeah. it, so even if they knew somebody that could break news to them, a lot of them don't even have the nerve to go out there and do it. Their job's not easy. You know this. I know this. Everybody else who does it, Ken Rosenthal, all these guys you have, have been you have to have, um, to have. Yeah, you have to have thick skin. No question about it. I mean, all of these guys have been wrong in the past. So it's funny when. You see, Dan, like, even even with my back and forth with Dan Clark, even my tweet was not to say, well, he's wrong. My tweet was basically, if he's right, I'm going to give him credit. That's a big scoop. 
um, I wasn't going out there to discredit the guy at all because I understand it. There's going to be times where you're wrong, and that shouldn't be held against you forever like they're trying to do with Dan Clark because he said something about um, uh, Nick Markakis was going to resign with the Orioles, and he ended up going to, to, to Atlanta. Well, this shit happens. I mean, he's not. you're not always going to be 100% accurate. Nobody is. And specifically, this new source that told you that information is Miami-based. Yes. And it's a uh, no um uh they're Hispanic also, so exactly. I don't know if that plays into anything, but they're very close. Put it this way, to a lot of major league agents that deal with a lot of these players. Exactly. I mean, I mean, if you ask me, man, that information Dan Clark put out today, I'm I'm not very familiar with that guy, but the way he put it out and the way he stood by it, I mean, no sane person is going to put out information like that and just put it out just to put it out. He actually believes what he tweeted out, and I believe that Manny Machado's coming to the Bronx. Yeah, I mean, I think he has to believe it. I mean, uh, you got to look at it in a couple of different ways. I mean, this guy's a member of a lot of big reporting uh, groups out there that that he gets this – is, this is what this man makes a living off of. He makes a living off of doing this. I, I don't think – without any bit of confidence. Like some people said, oh, he's doing this to troll Yankee fans. Are you kidding me? This man has no life. <laughs> he's mean, doing this to troll you, living in well, your basement with your mother, exactly. doing nothing at all because you want to hate on him, so he feels the need, I'm going to have to go troll you. You make no money for yourself, so he's going to look to troll these type of people. Come on, man. Like don't Don't knock the guy on that level. At the end of the day, my disagreement with Dan Clark was, for somebody who worked alongside the Orioles and has had a lot of things about Manny Machado, during the year he talked high praise about him. He was very big on Machado towards the end of the season with the Dodgers, said it was a great move. And then all of a sudden he was kind of doing everything else that all the other reporters were doing, knocking him. He has the true colors are coming out. He made a remark that whoever signs him to $100 million is a fool. And I called him out on that, like anybody else would. And what he tried to tell me was that he never said it, Many other people came by and said, yes, you did. I remember you saying that. The tweet was apparently deleted or so on and so forth. But um, that's the only problem I ever had with the guy. But I'm not going to sit here and say that he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's a, he's a major league reporter. He's done this for a while now. Yeah, I could understand if he um, was a reporter for another team city, like um, Los Angeles or something like that. But he specifically reports on Baltimore sports, and um, he's been doing it for a while. So what he's saying is, is really credible when you dig deep down to it. Yeah, and I mean, like, you know, people have asked me too, like, even if a friend, even if Manny told a friend, does that mean it has to be true? No, it doesn't. I mean, it, it doesn't. Manny can say what he wants. At the end of the day, it's going to come down to the money and what's best for him and his family. Spe- but let's, let's yeah, specifically, also um, in here. Let me, let, let me put something in there. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically, the friend that told Dan Clark, I have another source. You know those people with the blue check marks, etc. He told mm-hmm. me that specifically that player did Dan a solid by giving him that information in order for Dan to get the story out first, and in return Dan would get um, followers, traffic to his sites, etc., credibility, etc. That's what I was told, and he confirmed that again to me. Of of course, no. I can def I can definitely see that. No doubt about it. I mean, that happens a lot, especially in this game. I mean, you know, people look to help each other out, and that's something that you know we're fairly common with by people we've met throughout the years. Yeah. So I mean, there, there's no doubt about that. That stuff like that happens. I mean, just in my barely a year now on Twitter, there's about two or three other people that if I mention their names, everybody on here would know because they follow them on on Twitter that give me information or I run information by them. That's confirmed by you and some other people I talk to that I send them screenshots uh, that I feel comfortable with of the people that I actually know and I trust. Exactly. But that happens all the time. So would I be shocked if this comes out and, and it's obviously accurate and Manny Machado the Yankee? Not at all. I mean, and let's also not forget this. Let's not forget that this man took pictures with all the Yankees at the All-Star <laughs> game. Exactly. Let's not forget that he liked the picture of himself on the Yankees. Let's not forget he had a four-hour dinner with the Yankee hierarchy. Uh, even though that's common, I don't think these guys were talking about what life's going to be like in Philadelphia. Exactly. I mean, I'm pretty sure he, he expressed his desire 
I want to be here. Here's what I'm willing to do. The Yankees might have said, hey, are you willing to go back to third? I reported last year at the deadline before anybody else when John Heyman and everybody was saying there was no chance of it happening <laughs> that Manny Machado would play third base again for the Yankees. That has now come out as to be accurate. That's probably on the table, too. I mentioned that earlier. That there's a possibility he goes to third for the Yankees. And the Yankees find another good defensive shortstop. Just because of the idea of the middle infield having lefty pitchers, guys that get a lot of ground balls, you want that left side to be really solid. And let's also not forget that Miguel Andujar sat out the last game of the season. <laughs> the elimination game because the Yankees were concerned about defense. The Yankees are a heavy analytic team as well, and um, it just makes perfect sense to go after Machado and sign him. I mean, you have a a chip right there in Andahor that you could get a haul for as of now as well. His his value is so high. And well, no, no, no question sense. about it. No question about it. There's a lot of teams out there that are interested in Miguel Andahor, San Diego being one of them. You know, but there's a lot of starting pitchers that could become available if that name is more out there. You know, and here's the thing, let's not forget, and this, this happens more with the Yankees. I talked about this today than any other team. The New York Yankees do a tremendous job of not leaking no information to anybody. Brian Cashman has a team around him who doesn't give nothing out. That's why so many moves are made out of nowhere when it comes to the Yankees. Let's, let's, let's remember here. Miguel Andahar's name has been out there in the market. But you know for a fact, the Yankees aren't looking to deal Andahar unless they get Manny Machado. It's just obvious. Exactly. So, at the end of the day, who knows who Brian Cashman has spoken about? Who knows what team has said, hey, look, if you guys do land him, we will give you this guy for Andahar. We'll talk about that type of deal. Could be names that we don't haven't even heard about yet. And he could be a chip to be uh, send out Ellsbury as well. Correct. Correct. And, I mean, uh, th that's the thing, too. Teams will – the same way the Yankees collect insurance on Ellsbury – teams will do the same thing. Exactly. So if Ellsbury doesn't play, that does not change. So there, there's many different routes the Yankees can go. The Yankees can go ahead and save $9 million on Sonny Gray by accepting prospects. Um, th there's many other ways the Yankees can go about saving money. Um, I also have some information, too, that I was going to tweet out, but since we're already talking, I'll talk about it. The Yankees are discussing possibly a four-year deal for Zach Britton, that um, we'll see where that goes. But I know that they've been trying to stay at the three-year deal. Britton wants four or five. They are discussing a four-year deal with Zach Britton. But, of course, Philadelphia, uh, the Red Sox are also in on Britton. Houston is in on Britton. There's a lot of teams that like Zach Britton. I heard a New York Mets may look to go after him also. So there's a lot of teams also involved in Britton. So I'll throw that nugget out there also. Yeah, Britton um, loves New York and um, he wants to be a Yankee. And also... Judging by other players, when their contracts are up, um, Cashman is known to sign them to one more year, like Cease is a bad thing, et cetera. Yeah, correct, exactly. I mean, he's a and he's a solid fit. You know, a, a lot of people want to knock what Britain did last year with the Yankees. It was a totally new environment. Still pitched to an under three ERA. You could talk about the home run in Boston uh, against the Red Sox or whatever you want. They to need him. They need him at this point, room. though. They need him. They need him. I mean, he, he's a. He, he's a he's a uh, uh, he, arguably he could be your best relief pitcher on the Yankees. Arguably, yep. they need a left-handed I mean, relief pitcher as well. No doubt about it. I mean, the Yankees so many years have let lefties go. Um, you know, they 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 obviously traded Miller, and we've seen Miller's career kind of I don't want to say go downhill, but it's been affected by injuries, and he's never been the same guy again. You know, we saw Tarpley last year, but again, a guy like a Stephen Tarpley. You, you know the potential is there. He did very well for the Yankees last year. But, again, it's not a guy you just want to say, hey, we're relying on you to be a late-inning guy or a guy that just dominates lefties. He could get both guys out, by the way. But you, you want him to be able to earn that role. It's something I talk about a lot when it comes to guys like Luke Voigt and Greg Bird. Don't give these guys roles. Don't just say, hey, you're my first baseman. Let him earn it. Let him yeah. earn it because that's when the true competition comes out. I think that's something that really affected uh, Greg Bird for a couple of years. So where do you see uh, Harper going now? I don't know. It's interesting, man. I mean, things are getting interesting. It, it really is. Um, I think we're going to start hearing more about Harper and the Yankees. 
I I don't have I don't have a hundred and fifty you know percent evidence of that, but God, I mean, it's like I talked about on my live chat today. If you're Scott Boris and and as a as a um, God, my goodness, I've got a John Heyman. John Heyman said that the only real in team right now that we know of for uh, Bryce Harper is the White Sox. And then Steve Phillips made a great point that. If the Phillies really wanted this guy, they weren't one of the teams that met him in Vegas. Exactly. So if that is the case, and Bryce Harper comes to his agent, Scott Boris, and go, hey, look, Scott, I don't want to go to the White Sox. I don't care what they're offering me. The Yankees just got Machado. They got a good squad over there. What can we make work? Can we talk to them? Yeah, I heard he'll, if- he'll be willing to take less years to play for the game. I mean, I mean, if if it comes down to, and let's remember again, it is kind of odd to think that maybe Bryce Harper would take a small deal and then hit the market again. But I'll tell you what, what Bryce Harper? Let, let's remember, this is not a 32 year old guy. This is a 26 year old ball player, very very young, can hit the market whenever the hell he wants to. He can very much go to the Yankees and go, look, hell, I'll play for you guys for 40 million dollars. I'll do a two-year, $80 million contract. Does that kind of sound insane just talking about it? In a way, yes, it does. But, but, the Yankees got freaking Brett Gardner in left field. <laughs> they don't got Mickey Mantle in left. And on top of that, if you really want to get down to the, to the nitty-gritty, the only outfielder the Yankees got that's on par with Bryce Harper is Aaron Judge. Exactly. He's not being blocked by Stanton. He's not being blocked by Hicks. And I'm just being realistic about it. I mean, I'm taking salaries out of the out of the conversation. I'm talking about potential. Because at the end of the day, the Yankees are probably already regretting the Stanton deal. Oh, definitely. I mean, you talk about that more than anybody. Yeah. I just I put mean, it out they, because they, nobody they, else they is talking are. about it. Because it's just common sense. That you're going to pay a guy, not really paying him $32 million because they got money from the Marlins. But he's going to be a DH making thirty-two million dollars per season. That just—that's just stupid. Knowing that you have so many bets that could use the DH once in a while. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree a hundred percent. I don't understand the idea behind the, this whole thing that this guy's just a DH. Yeah, it makes no sense. I mean, it makes no sense at all. Like, I, I'm a let, let me. I'm a fan of Brett Gardner. I like what Brett Gardner has done for the Yankees. I, I think he's been a tremendous Yankee. He's been there since 09, the last remaining player since 09 with Sabathia. But you you look at Brett Gardner right now, can you really expect much more than what Brett Gardner gave the Yankees last year? I, I mean, I can't. I can't sit here and say I think Brett Gardner is going to go back to a 17, 18, 19, 20 home run guy hit 265, steal 30 bases, 25 bases or so, and score 100 runs. I don't think he's that guy no more. He's a fourth outfielder. Maybe one of the best ones you have on a team. Who's our leadoff hitter, by the way? Aaron Hicks. That's right. I mean, I mean the, the, the way the lineup is right now. I mean, yeah. I mean, that, that that's funny. I mean, I think that they're, they're disabled that, um, that position. Do you eventually make Labor Torres? A Leo hitter? I mean, they, I mean they, they, they need to do something. There's many, there's many different ways you could go about it. But again, um, the, the Yankees still got moves to make. That's why I said it's so interesting, and I've talked about this for the longest time in the world. Um, I feel like that's that's like my new my new tagline. I I, I said this weeks ago. I talked about this a long time ago. <laughs> um, I'm like living in the friggin' twilight zone. Um, but that's something that I have. I've said that a lot, that this offseason is odd because one move can lead to many different moves. Whatever happens with Machado is going to, is gonna, I think, have a lot of flurries of other moves that could happen. The Yankees can always move Aaron Hicks if they needed to. You know, is there a possibility that Stanton could be moved? I say it again, yes, I think there is a possibility. The Dodgers could look to make a deal with him. What if the Yankees maybe, you know, um, uh, uh, Add some salary to that, maybe a de- decent prospect to get rid of uh, Stanton. Yeah, I think so he's then, gone. I think he's gone. I don't, I don't think he's going to remain again. It makes absolutely zero sense to have him on this team. And I mean, you've said that for a while. You said that you feel that you know 
Stanton is gone. A lot of people that discredit that, I think they're not seeing the big picture, and I don't think they're seeing exactly what you're saying. Yeah. I don't think they're understanding exactly what you mean and what you're saying. So, uh, I mean, we'll see what happens there, but they have a lot of more moves they can make. I think Sonny Gray you'll you'll see traded here probably in the next two weeks, top. Um, could really come any day. I know the Brewers, the Padres, the Reds are all interested. Uh, there's a couple of um, good ideas that I spoke about today when it comes to the Brewers. Uh, Eric Thames is available, who's a lefty first baseman. Um, a lot of people like Thames, good clubhouse guy. They got uh, Chase Anderson as a starter, Corey Knable, who's a very, very dominating relief pitcher who could possibly uh, come back in a deal. So there's a lot of major league talent you can get. But again, you can also do somewhat of a salary exchange where you save some money and maybe get a decent prospect or two. Exactly. So this has been the Salmonetti source. Where do you see? What do you think about Dan Clark's tweet? Let's let's be realistic. Realistic. Do you think what he tweeted out is accurate? And do you see Manny Machado to the Yankees having? Um, I would say I would say yeah. I mean, to him it's accurate. I mean, to Dan Dan Clark it's accurate and. I mean, I'm not the type of person that's going to discredit people because I, I've been on that side, and I know what it's like. It's disgusting. Yeah. It's disgraceful. You know, when all you're doing is, is your job, when you got sources out there and you report what they tell you, and sometimes things change last minute and you look wrong or the information wasn't 100% spot on, and you look like the fool of the day, but... <laughs> no, he's going to he's gonna be a legendary fool if he, he's wrong on that. Oh, yeah. I mean, if Dan Clark is wrong on this... I don't know where where you can go. Like he'll be forgiven and his career can move on, but you're talking about one of the all time great blunders. I mean, you got Yahoo Sports <laughs> writing articles about this exactly. right now, and, and and many 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 other articles out there are starting to be written more now about it. But I'll say this: I think it's accurate because Dan Clark put it out there and he believes it's accurate. And I don't think he would just go ahead and do it. And let's not sit here and act like. The Yankees didn't just meet with Machado. They didn't have the whole meeting with him. They're not interested. We know all this. We know Manny's wanted to be a Yankee. We know Manny has played in the AL East. The Yankees have loved him for years. Let's not forget all that. Let's not forget Didi's hurt. The Yankees need a shortstop. Let's not forget he's a platinum gold glove winner at third base. Forget the attitude bullshit, which is what it is. Yep. Yankee fans act like Alex Rodriguez didn't slap balls out of people's gloves. <laughs> Okay? He was on the Yankees, disgracing the pinstripes on the Yankees. I love A-Rod. He's a changed <laughs> man. Now he's slapping a J Lo's ass. It's <laughs> a big difference. Exactly. He went from slapping balls to slapping ass. Exactly. But at the end of the day, I think Dan Clark is accurate. I think Manny Machado, if you had to choose, I think he goes to the Yankees. Yep. I, I've said it. You've said it. I think he leaves money on the table. And I think he comes to New York. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what position he takes up. Are the Yankees going to announce him as a third baseman or as a shortstop? That'll be interesting to see. And um, we'll go from there. But I give kudos to Dan Clark. I hope Dan Clark is right, like every Yankee fan should hope he's right. Exactly. And on, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, whenever it is, Thursday, I can say credit to Dan Clark, great call, Manny Machado the Yankees. Now, if he signs for eight years or seven years for two fifty, I want my damn credit. All right. <laughs> so this has been the Sam and Eddie source with an exclusive. Nice having you on, Peter. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.